Summation notation, especially double summations, can be confusing, and the best way to learn is by doing some examples, so let's begin. First, for a quick review, and see the video linked below first if this is new. On the left, we can see there's a data table, and we reference individual values within the data table by using the symbol X, and then a subscript where the first number represents the row and the second number represents the column. The rows are the horizontal sets of numbers, and the columns are the vertical ones. In this data table, since we'll ignore the left-hand column because it's just data labels, it has four columns and five rows. The summation symbol looks like the large E, that's a Greek sigma. Underneath the symbol we have the dummy variable, in this case i. We show what number it starts with, which is a 1, and it increases by steps of 1 up to the value at the top of the symbol, which is a 6. After the symbol, we can see that there's just the i, so that's telling us for this summation it would be i equals 1, plus i equals 2, plus i equals 3, plus i equals 4, plus i equals 5, plus i equals 6, and then it would stop, and we would add all those up to get a 21. Okay, that's the basics. Now let's look at some examples. Here's the first data set we'll be using, and first we'll start by asking five simple questions. How many rows does it have? How many columns does it have? What's the value of x1, 3, the value of x3, 1, and the value of x4, 5? The data table has six rows. They're labeled there, and you can see that each horizontal set is a row, and we have six of those horizontal sets. The data set has five columns. You can see the labels below the data set. It's each of those vertical rows. We're ignoring the one at the far left because those are just labels for the individuals in each of the columns. We find the value of x1, 3 by going to the first row and then going across to the third column, and the number in that location is the number 2. We find the value of x3, 1 by going to the third row down, the first column, and again, remember, we're ignoring that column on the far left, so that gives us the number 7. We find the value x4, 5 by going to the fourth row, to the fifth column, and that's the number 45. Okay, these are the basics. Once we know how to identify values within our data table, we can start working with the summation symbols themselves. Here we have two summations we're interested in. What is the summation from i equals 1 to 3 of xi, 1? And then the summation from i going from 1 to 3 for x1, i. So note that the letter i is used in both of these examples. In the first one, it's going to represent the row changing from 1 to 3. In the second one, it's going to represent the column changing from 1 to 3. The letters used in summation symbols are arbitrary. It's the location within the subscripts that matters. Okay, the summation from i equals 1 to 3 of xi, 1 is x1, 1 plus x2, 1 plus x3, 1. You can see that letter i is changing from 1, which is the start, as represented below the sigma, up to 3, which is the number at the top of the sigma. We find those values in the data table, and that's the 4, the 9, and the 7. And then we add those up, 4 plus 9 plus 7 equals 20. For our second summation, i going from 1 to 3 of x1, i, the second subscript is going to change. So that's going to be x1, 1 plus x1, 2 plus x1, 3. We find those in our data table, so we can see they're all in the first row, and it's columns 1, 2, and 3. So those are the values 4 plus 5 plus 2 equals 11. A useful skill to develop is visualizing where in the data table the summation is taking the values from. So for our top example, we can see that the second subscript is a 1, so we're staying in column 1, but we're going from rows 1 to 3, so that rectangle represented by the dashed line in the data table matches up with our sum. For our second sum, the first subscript was staying as a 1, so that's the first row. The second was changing 1 to 3, so that was columns 1, 2, and 3 and that is represented by the dotted line rectangle in the data table. Okay, now let's look at some double summations. So on the left, we're looking at i going from 1 to 3 and j going from 2 to 4, and that's x i comma j. So the rows, represented by the letter i, are going from 1 to 3, and the columns are going from 2 to 4. In the second summation, i is going from 1 to 3, j is going from 2 to 4, same thing, but you can see the subscripts are reversed. Now J represents the rows, and I represents the columns. 
For our first summation, I put a dashed line around the double summation below, and I've also put the dashed line in a rectangle in the table to represent what values are going to be summed. At the top, you can see the double summation written again, and I've indicated i going from 1 to 3, and we're going to expand out the double summation, keeping the second part of the summation, the j going from 2 to 4, the same, but then our three terms for i going from 1 to 3 are going to give us three single summations. So you can see the first one of those is x1, j. The second is the summation for x2, j. And the third is the summation for x3, j. Now we can work with each of those single summations the way that we worked with our summations before. So for the first summation, j going from 2 to 4 of x1, j we would get x1, 2 plus x1, 3 plus x1, 4. The second summation, j from 2 to 4, of x2, j would give us x2, 2 plus x2, 3 plus x2, 4. And then the third summation, x3, j going from j of 2 to 4 would give us x3, 2 plus x3, 3 plus x3, 4. Looking at those numbers in the table, we would get 5 plus 2 plus 11 for the first summation, 8 plus 3 plus 15 for the second summation, and 10 plus 1 plus 18 for the third summation. And that would give us 18 plus 26 plus 29 is 73. And it's also useful to visualize what part of the table we're adding up. So our rows, represented by i, we're going from 1 to 3, and our columns, represented by j, we're going from 2 to 4. So that tells us it's the first three rows and then columns two, three, and four in our table. For our second double summation, I've represented the data with a dotted line. So now we're looking at i going from one to three, and j going from two to four, but the subscripts are reversed from what they were in the previous example. So again, we can write this double summation at the top and keep the i going from one to three and expand that out. But now our three summations will be j from 2 to 4 of xj, 1, plus summation j from 2 to 4 of xj, 2, and then summation from j 2 to 4 of xj, 3. So for that first summation, that's going to give us x2, 1, plus x3, 1, plus x4, 1. X, that first subscript is the one that's changing. The second summation. It's going to give us x2, 2 plus x3, 2 plus x4, 2. And then our third summation is going to give us x2, 3 plus x3, 3 plus x4, 3. And then going to our table, looking those numbers up, the first summation is going to give us 9 plus 7 plus 8. Second will give us 8 plus 10 plus 17. Third will give us 3 plus 1 plus 6. So that's 24 plus 35 plus 10 gives us 69. And again, it's also useful to visualize where this is in the table. So our double summation is going from i from 1 to 3, but now i represents the columns, right? The second subscript after the x. So we have columns 1 through 3. And then j represents the rows, because that's the first subscript. j going from 2 to 4, so that's rows 2, 3, and 4 for columns 1, 2, and 3, as indicated by the dotted rectangle. Here's a summary of the two double summations we just did, showing the dashed line and the dotted line for each of the double summations. And again, double summations can seem overwhelming, but if you break it up into pieces, or if you can visualize it within the table, they can become quite doable. Another type of question that can help us work with double summations would be to identify what would the double summation be for each of the areas in the table shown. So on the left, we have this dashed rectangle, and we want to know what equation represents the mean of the area surrounded by the dashed lines. And then on the right, what equation represents the mean of the area surrounded by the dotted lines. First up, the dashed lines. So there are eight values in our region. We're looking at rows 1 to 2 and columns 2 to 5. So our double summation is going to go from i of 1 to 2, so that's rows 1 and 2, and then j from 2 to 5, so that's going to be columns 2 to 5, and then x, i, comma, j for the subscripts. And then we'll add all those up and then divide by 8 in order to get the mean. For the area shown by the dotted line, there's going to be six values in there. We're looking at rows 4, 5, and 6, and columns 2 and 3. 
So we can have the double summation, i going from 4, 5, and 6, and then j going from 2 and 3, and then the subscripts will be x, i, comma, j. Add all those values up and then divide by 6 because there are 6 values to get the mean. And then this slide again shows the summary of the double summations that we calculate the means of each of those regions. Practice is always good, so let's do the exact same questions for a second set of data with a different number of rows and a different number of columns. So again, our first five starting questions, how many rows, how many columns, what's the value of x3, 4, what's the value of x5, 2, what's the value of x7, 3. Rows is how many horizontal sets of numbers we have, and we have nine rows. Columns is how many vertical sets of numbers we have, and we have four columns, as indicated. x3, 4 is going to be the value in the third row down and the fourth column across. That value is 18. For x5, 2, that's the fifth row down, second column across, and that's a 14. For x7, 3, that's the seventh row down, the third row across, and that's the 32. So we have a data table that's nine rows tall, four columns wide, and we can identify the values within. Now for two summations, and you'll note that the dummy variable is represented by the letter M instead of the letters I or J. The use of the letter for the subscripts is totally arbitrary. Okay, for the first sum, M is going from one to four. It's X M sub three. M is representing the row. For the second summation, M from one to four, X three comma M, M is representing the columns. For our first summation, m from 1 to 4 of x m comma 3, m, the first subscript is going to change, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to give us x 1 comma 3 plus x 2 comma 3 plus x 3 comma 3 plus x 4 comma 3. The row is changing 1, 2, 3, 4 in the third column, represented by the dashed rectangle in the table there. So those are the values 23 plus 6 plus 12 plus 13 equals 54. For our second summation, m is going from 1 to 4, but now it's the second value in the subscript of x3, m. So it's going to be x3, 1 plus x3, 2 plus x3, 3 plus x3, 4. So that's the rectangle represented by the dotted line in the data table. So that's going to be 2 plus 10 plus 12 plus 18 gives us 42. And again, it's a useful exercise to look at a summation symbol and be able to identify what region of the data table it's referencing. The first summation is referencing the region enclosed by the dashed line. The second is referencing the region enclosed by the dotted line. Now let's look at two double summations. So on the left-hand side, we have the summation for m from three to five and n from two to four of x m comma n. So the rows are changing from 3 to 5, and the columns are changing from 2 to 4. In the second double summation, m is going from 7 to 9, n is going from 2 to 3 of x, m, comma, n. So we're going rows 7 to 9, columns 2 to 3 in the second double summation. Okay, for the first double summation, we're looking at the region for rows 3 to 5, columns 2 to 4. So that's represented by the dashed line in the table. We can take our double summation and take the first summation and expand that out so that the m equals 3, 4, and 5 gets put into the x m comma n. So we would have x 3 comma n, x 4 comma n, and x 5 comma n for each of the summations for n of 2, n of 3, n of 4. So our double summation can be expanded out into the summation n from 2 to 4 of x3, n, plus summation from n 2 to 4 of x4, n, plus the summation from n 2 to 4 of x5, n. So that gives us x3, 2 plus x3, 3 plus x3, 4 for the first summation, plus x4, 2 plus x4, 3 plus x4, 4 for the second summation plus x5, 2, plus x5, 3, plus x5, 4 for the third summation. Looking in the data table, that would be 10 plus 12 plus 18, plus 17 plus 13 plus 16, plus 14 plus 15 plus 20. Adding those up, 40 plus 46 plus 49 would give us 135. For the second double summation, 
we're looking at M from 7 to 9, so that's rows 7 to 9, N from 2 to 3, so that's columns 2 and 3, and again we can take the double summation and expand it out for M of 7, 8, and 9. We could then get a single summation for N of 2 and 3 for X7, N, plus the summation from N2 to 3 of X8, N, plus the summation from N2 to 3 of X9, N. So we would get X7, 2 plus X7, 3 for this first summation, X8, 2 plus X8, 3 for the second summation, plus X9, 2 plus X9, 3 for the third summation. That gives us 31 plus 32 for the first summation, 45 plus 48 for the second summation, 66 plus 77 for the third summation. Adding those up, 63 plus 93 plus 143 gives us 299. This slide kind of summarizes what we're doing. The double summations represent rectangles in our data table. Our first double summation represented by the dashed line for rows 3 to 5, columns 2 to 4 would give us 135. The second summation represented by the dotted line in the data table is that sum for rows 7 to 9 and columns 2 to 3 and that was 299. And you can see for each of those double summations how we can expand out the double summation into just a set of single summations that are much easier to work with. Now we can look at a question where we try to come up with the double summation that represents the mean of the values represented by the rectangle using the dashed line or the dotted line. So for the area represented by the dashed line, that's those six values, it's rows three to four and columns one to three. So our double summation would go from three to four for the first subscript dummy variable and one to three for the second subscript dummy variable. So we could have x m comma n, summation from m from three to four, n from one to three, and then all divided by six because there are six values to get the mean. For this area represented by the dotted line, we're looking at rows one to seven and then columns two, three, and four. So there's a total of 21 values in there. So if we have x m comma n, the first subscript will be the rows. That's going to be m from 1 to 7. The second subscript is n, representing the columns. That's going from 2 to 4. So our double summation, m from 1 to 7, n from 2 to 4, of x m comma n, and then all divided by 21, because there are 21 values, to get the mean. This slide summarizes what we just looked at, where these double summations can be used to calculate the means of values in the table. And these are the basics of how to use summation and double summation to calculate values when we have a bunch of numbers in a data table. The values we looked at were means, but obviously the same sort of thing can be done to calculate variances and standard deviations and other summary statistics when you have tables of values. This video is one of a pair this was mainly examples, and the other video linked below is more conceptual and introductory.